This is the main PCB, or the Logic PCB, out of a uh, Savvy's Workshop lightsaber hilt. I call it a Logic PCB because it's got the microcontroller on it, which handles all the logic of the blade. Uh, you know, it, it figures out what RFID uh, number it's read from the kyber crystal and sends that to the blade. It knows when the switch is turned on or off and to send the code to animate the blade and all of that stuff. When the when the blade is swung, it detects when the blade is being swung, when it hits something to sig signal. All the logic, all the logic is in that microcontroller. That's why I call this the Logic PCB. Uh, and this one is broken. Uh, I broke it, and uh, what I was trying to do was to replace that little square chip right there. That's the accelerometer. That's the thing that controls or detects when you swing the blade. And if you've ever used a Savvy's uh, Workshop lightsaber, you know that there's a little bit of a delay between swinging the blade and the sound coming out of the blade to sort of uh, represent that the blade is being swung or that the that, that there's a, it's hit something and there's a clash. There's, there's a little bit of a delay. And so I didn't think replacing that chip would help, but I thought I'd give it a go just, just to see on the, you know, off chance it did. Um, I identified that specific accelerometer. It's a Kionix KX either 022 or a 122 or a 222, one of those three chips. Uh, I believe it's a 022 or a 122, most likely. Um, anyways, I bought one of each and I was going to replace them one at a time, try different versions, and see if that somehow improved the performance of the the lightsaber blade. Uh, and after replacing the chip once, uh, it doesn't work anymore. And I think what happened is, to remove the chip, I have to apply hot air to the chip to get it to melt the, the, the solder so that I can then remove the chip and put a new chip in its place. And I think what happened is the board was heating in an uneven manner and so part of the board would expand under the heat while another part of the board did not and I think that caused a, a fracture somewhere um, most likely underneath the epoxy here somewhere underneath maybe one of the bond wires that connects the silicon die to the board or maybe a trace under the epoxy it's I, I can't really tell but um, anyways this is broken and I'm going to demonstrate how it's broken and uh, how I can fix it, and then show you that it doesn't really fix get fixed. It stays broken, and and what the heck can I do now? Because this is the only Savvy's Workshop lightsaber chassis that I have. Okay, so I've plugged in a speaker, so you can hear what's going to happen to it. I'm going to apply power to it through my bench power supply here. Just clip it on to the power and ground pins or pads here stay don't short all right and I'm, I, I will uh, now apply power to the board four and a half volts which represents three one and a half volt batteries from the battery pack and you'll hear hopefully what's wrong you should be able to hear that the uh, noise that's made when the blade is inserted into the uh, hilt is being repeated over and over and over again. I'm going to turn that off real quick. Uh, <clears throat> so the, the, the microcontroller is running. The logic is still there. It's still running. It's just it's getting hung up for whatever reason. Um, what I think is happening is the, the, the pin, the wire comes from the uh, the blade uh, down to the microcontroller to tell it that a blade has been inserted and also the same wire that then the microcontroller sends commands out over to tell the blade to turn a certain color. I think where that connects to the uh, blade uh, to the microcontroller is broken somehow underneath that blob of epoxy. And now I'm going to fix it. I have my hot air gun, my reflow station, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to put it to 150 degrees Celsius. I'm going to turn on the, uh, the the PCB again. You'll hear the noise going, and then I'm going to start warming up the PCB. Now this, this is not hot enough to melt anything. And there you go. The problem has been fixed. Isn't that amazing? Now, it will stay 
in this state working fine uh, as long as I keep power to the board. Um, after this cools down a little bit and I take power away and then bring power back to the board, it'll get stuck in that loop again, which is why I think it, it has something to do with a broken frac a micro fracture somewhere. The heat is causing it to temporarily some part of the board to expand to complete that connection and then when the when it cools off it contracts the connection is broken but at that point that connection is no, no longer needed for whatever reason i've tried reflowing solder over everything nothing seems to uh fix it so which is why again i think we're talking about something under that epoxy blob that it's probably maybe a via that goes from this side of the board to the microcontroller side um or a, a bond wire on the microcontroller side that, that has broken. Um, so now I'm going to uh, pull power off and then put power back to the board. And you can see the problem is back. And again, just bring in, heat things up a little bit, and it fixes itself. So that's frustrating. The board is... is works if it can just get past that initial issue with the startup se uh, uh, that, that that startup sequence and I've thought about maybe trying to uh, could I solder a jumper somewhere that would fix this temporarily I, I don't know I don't know the thing is I just want to buy a replacement board but that I can't because right now the parks are closed and the prices for workshop chassis has gone through the roof. They would normally be about 50, 60 bucks on eBay. They're now three times, four times as much. It is ridiculous, the prices that they, they want for these things right now. So I'm not going to pay that kind of money just to get a new PCB. And I need one because I want to start working on uh, finalizing some color mods that I have. I have some switches. I want to try and mount a switch to the blade and you know with a little pinhole that you can then toggle that switch so you can switch between different color mods all this cool stuff but I can't do that until I have a working uh, chassis so what can I do I can wait for another couple of months until the parks reopen and and the, the, the stock of all the scrap dealers on eBay uh, goes back up and they have all these leftover chassis to get rid of for cheap money again or Rather than wait for that, I could try and make one of these myself. And so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make one of those. This is EasyEDA.com. This is a website where you can design a circuit through a, on a schematic here like this, and then you can convert it to a PCB. You can lay out the PCB and then have it generate files that you can then give to any PCB manufacturer and have them make your PCB. Uh, Easy EDA doesn't cost anything. It's all web-based. Uh, I've used it for almost everything that I've designed so far, PCB-wise, and uh, for the most part, I've had no problems with it. I've had a few quirks here and there, browser compatibility issues, but uh, you can't beat it for the price. So what we're looking at here is the schematic for the, my first attempt at making a replacement Savvy's Workshop lightsaber hilt logic board. Um, at its heart here is this. This is the microcontroller. I chose an AT Tiny 85. Why? Because I already have a bunch and I need to get rid of them. And so I'm going to use this as a way to get rid of at least a couple of them. Uh, it only has eight pins, uh, two of those for power. The other six pins you can use to interface with the circuitry and however you want. Uh, six pins is not a lot of pins for controlling everything that a, a lightsaber needs, but in this case, because I want to do something very bare bones and simple, I can get away with it. Uh, over here on the left is a uh, voltage regulator that's going to take the battery power and bring it down to 3.3 volts to power the microcontroller. It'll also be used to power the LEDs. Um, in the base of the uh, crystal chamber um, and the uh, uh, Hall effect sensor that's going to be um, 
used to detect when the switch has been thrown to ignite the blade. Uh, this is a programming header here. This is to allow me to, uh, it's a standardized header that's going to allow me to program that uh, microcontroller so I can put it onto the board. I can solder it to the board along with everything else, and then I can program it in place instead of having to desolder the chip and put it into a programmer every time I need to reprogram it. Uh, and then down here, P1 and P2, these are the ribbon cable connectors. Um, they go off to P1 here, you can see, is where uh, I connect to the uh, lightsaber blade data pin and the switch at the top of the crystal chamber that detects when a kyber crystal has been inserted. Um, the rest of those pins go to the uh, control the LEDs at the top of the, uh, the, uh, the lightsaber hilt. Uh, I'm not using them. I'm not going to turn them on or anything here. I'm leaving them disconnected for now. In the future, I could use them for something maybe, but right now I, I again, want to keep things simple. So those pins are all X'd out here because they're not connected. And then if we move over here to the right, we have P2. This is the other ribbon cable connector. This one connects to the bottom half of the chassis. This is where I get the uh, the signal from the Hall effect sensor that uh, the switch has been thrown to turn on the blade. Uh, this, like the other connector, has a connection for the LED. There's only one LED. It's an RGB LED um, in the base of the, uh, the, the crystal chamber, the LED that lights up from below. Uh, it's one package, but it has three individual, one red, one green, and one blue, three individual LEDs in one package. Each color gets its own pin. I'm tying them all together and set putting them through this transistor, which will act like a switch that I can control with the microcontroller. See, I'm calling it LED enable here. So the way it works is when I send uh, this, when I make this LED enable pin high, the electricity goes through the transistor, turns the transistor on, LEDs will turn on, and we'll get a white color at the base of the, uh, the crystal chamber. Um, I don't, I'm not controlling each color individually. I've tied them all together to simplify how many, because again, I, I'm limited with the number of pins I have on the microcontroller. So I'm only using one pin to control turning that LED on and off. And you can see you have the, the connection for the uh, Hall effect sensor. And um, a couple of these that are X'd out, I believe, are also for uh, LED stuff and then power and ground. And then last are those two uh, headers that I've added, the program and speaker headers. The speaker header includes um, a power connector. Thinking being, um, I can, if I, dis if I discover that I need something more to drive the speaker, if I need a, a transistor or an op amp or something to drive the speaker, um, then I can create maybe like a little daughter board and attach it through this header, and I can have the power for that for that daughter board come through that that extra pin. That's why I've got that. It's again just uh, for the future. If if I everything else works fine and I have some free time, maybe I'll try and figure out how to drive the speaker. But it's not something I really am focused on right now. And then I have this uh, program uh, header. It's going to contain a switch. The switch will have three pins on it, um, which is why there are three pins here, although the third pin isn't going to be used. That's why it's hexed out here. The switch will be used to connect power and the, the crystal switch together. I need to do that when it's not connected to the actual crystal switch, when I just have the PCB on my bench here. I need this so I can connect power to the crystal, the, the crystal switch port here, because that's being used to enable, on pin 3 here, the enable pin, to enable this voltage regulator. So the idea is you put the crystal into the, uh, the lightsaber hilt, and that enables or turns on, turns on this voltage regulator, which then turns on the microcontroller. And if you remove the crystal, this dis it disables the uh, voltage regulator, the microcontroller turns off, and it's not using up power. In theory, we'll see how it turns out in practice. And you can see I've made a bunch of notes for myself throughout the schematic here. Like, for example, 
Resistor 1 here, which I've just thrown in as just a standard pull-down resistor of 10k. I don't think I need it. However, I'm very used to needing a pull-up or pull-down resistor on pins that are not connected. You don't leave pins open. So I'm going to leave a spot for a resistor, and if I figure out or if I find that I need it, I'll put it in there. Otherwise, I'll just leave it unpopulated. And some notes about uh, discussing, if I use a voltage regulator and I then connect a programmer to it, initially I was thinking the programmer would connect directly to the microcontroller. But if I did that, then this wouldn't be VCC, this would be the 3.3 volt rail. And that would be fine because there'd be 5 volts on it, but that'd be okay. This microcontroller would be able to handle 5 volts just fine. But that would also mean 5 volts is coming in through here through the out pin on the uh, voltage regulator, meaning I would be back feeding 5 volts into the voltage regulator, and that's not a good thing. So what can I do to fix that? And some people I've seen online suggest throwing a diode going from pin 5 to pin 1. That could do it. Or, in this case, I'm just having the programming header go right, to, because it'll be 5 volts. That'll go to the input pin, and then I have this uh, switch here that I'll need to throw to enable the microcontroller. So 3.3 volts comes out to turn on the microcontroller. I meant the uh, voltage regulator over here. And then the, the enable switch here to turn on the microcontroller over here, so then the programmer can then program this. That's the theory. We'll find out. And I think that is everything. So then we can go and we can look at the layout itself. Um, this is the bottom layer. Uh, all the letters and numbers are reversed because you're, you're looking at how the bottom is laid out with respect to the top, which will be not reversed. Um, in fact, I'll turn on those layers here. So you can see the top with the, uh, the programming header, the, the program enable header, I guess you could call it, the speaker header, and those two ribbon connectors. And I can turn the bottom layer on and the top layer on, and you can see how they, the wires, the traces connect to everything. And once you've finished designing your board and laying it all out, Easy EDA has a 3D view to show you what the finished product might look like. Um, because I used components that have a um, that Easy EDA has a 3D model for, uh, it throws those 3D models into the 3D representation of the board, so you can sort of see what everything's going to look like. Uh, it's a little deceptive here because you're viewing this on a big screen here, so the board looks big. You have to keep in mind that the distance across this board is uh, about three centimeters. So you're talking about uh, a little over an inch, an inch and a quarter maybe. So, you know, you zoom out so it gets really small. And now you start to get a sense of what the, the size of the board will really be like. All right, come back. Um, the 3D models for the speaker and program headers there, that is not what I plan on having there. That's just what Easy EDA is throwing in there. I don't care about what 3D models they use for their representation of this because I know I'm going to be putting something else there later. All right, so that's about it. That is the layout. That is what I'm working on right now. The order for these PCBs has already been put in. Um, I am now waiting for the boards to be manufactured. That will probably take a week, and then they'll need to be shipped back to me. Um, the cheapest shipping option, I wouldn't get the boards for a month. Um, if I'm willing to pay a lot of money, I can get them within a couple of days. I'm going to pay a medium amount of money and get them in a week. So a week from manufacturing. So in theory, I should have these in hand a couple weeks from now. And when I do, I'll build one, I'll program it, and we will see what happens together. And if this works, then I can go back to my lightsaber blade mods, and maybe over the summer this becomes a side project where I try to make this a little bit more interesting, a little bit, add more features, maybe figure out the speaker, for example. 
And then uh, if, if it becomes useful, if other people are interested, I'll share this. But as you can see, this is right now a very simple circuit. You have everything on screen right now to go and design your own if you want. Um, so that's... That's all there is. Um, what else is there worth? If, if you want to go and design your own board, the specs here, it is a 30 millimeter diameter. The, this notch over here is not necessary. You do not need that. You can get rid of it. Uh, I think they put that there as uh, for a place for wires to be routed through, and then they didn't need it. So you can get rid of that notch there. This notch over here is about two millimeters um, at its where it sticks out here. And this flat edge here is also not necessary, um, especially if you decide that you don't want to do the castellated holes, uh, which I would recommend because it's just a, an extra cost that you don't need. Um, of course, I'm trying to mimic what the original board size looked like, so I added the notch, I added the flat edge here. That's not necessary. You can just do a circle that's 30 millimeters in diameter, add the little notch here. Make sure your, um, your P1 connector here has to be there because there's an opening in the, the, the plastic molding that holds all of this together for the ribbon cable that goes up to the top half of the, of the chassis. Uh, so you'll need, that's why the, the, the this little stick out is there and the ribbon cable connector has to be there. Other than that, everything else is pretty self-contained. You can put anything else wherever you want. Where P2 is on this board is where it is on the stock, uh, the stock logic board, but you don't need to put it there. Um, it's pretty straightforward. Again, one millimeter thick PCB, which means you cannot go through Osh Park. You gotta go through someplace else. Um, that's, that's it. If you want to make your own, you now have pretty much all the information. Um, the pinouts for P1 and P2 here, I will, I will include a link in the description to my research spreadsheet that I have on uh, Google. It has the pinouts for both of these connectors, um, as well, along with pictures and showing what the different PCBs that they connect to look like. That way you can go ahead and connect your own stuff. See, there we go. There are your pinouts there, three volts, RGB LEDs, ground, your ignite, sig ignite signal coming from the Hall Effect sensor, your blade data, your, the switch that determines whether or not there's a crystal inserted in the chambers there, power needs to go there, ground needs to go there. That's it, that's all the information. Uh, I will share an update as soon as I have one as to whether or not this is going to be successful.